It's been almost a good year since I made this review about the Quest 3. Bro, it smells so good, it smells like... It smells so new. Huh? And as of right now, the MetaQuest 3 is one of the best standalone VR headsets that you can get. With solid components like a Snapdragon Gen 2 chip and better performance, it definitely holds up to VRChat and other games and applications. I've been owning the Quest 3 for almost a year now, but is it still worth it to purchase for standalone and PC VR gaming, especially for VRChat? Let's take a look together. The Quest 3 is again one of the best standalone VR headsets you can get out there. But just recently, Meta has actually announced the Quest 3S, a light version of the Quest 3. Comparing these by data, you see that there are differences in lens, memory space, tracking and battery usage. Of course, the Quest 3S is definitely cheaper and way more affordable, which I reckon is very good for those who want to save up on money, yet also saves on important parts for that headset as well. The Quest 3 still performs really well as a solid standalone device for VRChat. VRChat has put a lot of work into finger tracking which the Quest 3 actually supports. Overall performance on the Quest 3 has been improving pretty much for a smoother experience in VRChat. The Quest 3 as a standalone device still only lets you use Quest compatible avatars and Quest compatible worlds as long as you don't connect it with your computer. Now if we compare the performance between the Quest 3 as a standalone device and the Quest 3 connected to a PC via PC Link, you can definitely see the differences in lighting and texture, though this does not have that much of an impact when it comes to immersion in my opinion. I reckon that the Quest 3S will somewhat look the same with the only difference being that the lenses might be smaller and have a different resolution, but finger tracking for example should still work for the Quest 3S. Meta has also announced that the Quest 3 and the Quest 3S will come with body tracking, which still has to be released as far as I know, but this is going to be a feature on both of these headsets, as both of them support pass-through and mixed reality experience, as well as inside-out tracking. There are other options for body tracking, like for example Slime VR, but I do think that we will get fully functional body tracking by 2025. Now, if you plan to get a Quest 3 or a Quest 3S, then you should also check out Kiwi Design! Kiwi Design has the perfect aesthetic accessories for your VR headset like the cozy face thingy with a nose dongly to play with or this sick head strap that you can strap around as well. Makes your headset look really good and fits perfectly for every head size, I promise. Also comes with a guide that shows you how to apply your accessories. Check out Kiwi Design and their accessories, the link is down in the description. Now to the important question, should you buy a Quest 3 for VRChat and for your first VR experience? Yes, but if you want to have a cheaper version with a few downgrades, then I'd recommend purchasing the Quest 3S, which is also perfect for VRChat as it does have some of the specs the Quest 3 has. But if you feel like you want to do more with your Quest headset, then I'd recommend the Quest 3 for a long-term VR investment. Now do me a favor and subscribe to this channel for more videos about Quest headsets, like this video and share it with someone who really wants to get a Meta Quest 3 or 3S. And as always, take care individual as well as in reality. Ciao ciao!